Good morning. It's Chrissy from the Creative Eclectic here. Um, hope you're having a happy Saturday. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. My phone decided to update on its Facebook right as I'm about to go live. So I hope someone's watching and that you're all having a fabulous, fabulous day. Oh, good morning, Glenda. Yay, I'm not here by myself. <laughs> Um, so today is mystery stamping and so we're um, doing our, doing it like we normally do. Um, so we've got our first clue which is our supplies and it's a bit smaller than I planned. Okay, so you need sentiment stamp set of your choice and I am using a sentiment from the Brightest Glow, which is a new stamp set in the mini catalogue. You'll need your ink pad. You will also need, um, and that ink pad needs to coordinate with your pattern paper. You'll need some pattern paper. Now, Glenda, are you stamping along today? I hope so. I hope you had enough time to grab things together. Now, this is a really um, quick, easy card we're doing today. And I call this one of our foundation cards. And one of my girlfriends calls it her little black dress or cards. So we need some adhesives. So I've got a few different types of adhesive here. I've got some black dimensionals, um, some multi-purpose glue and some tape. And I've also got my um, steel, uh, steel here as well. Um, then um, we have got our card base. And our card base is a standard um, half A4 A4 sheet. Oh, great. There's not a lot of materials in this blender, so I'm glad you're stamping along. Um, you also need two um, pieces of white. Now, one is for the front, obviously, and it is around about a quarter of an inch. So if you're in using US measurements, I have put those up on the site, uh, up on the um, clue number one. Your card's going to be slightly different, but I think they're shorter and wider than ours. But that's okay. And then you need a piece of white for the front, uh, the inside. So they're just under, about a quarter of an inch under a quarter of an A4 size sheet. Now you'll need a um, another piece of white, and this is your card colour number one and that measures at one and three quarter inches by three and a quarter inches okay and this piece of white here is one and a half inches by three so you'll see you can sort of guess that that's going to layer on now, I need to tell you a little bit about the pattern paper. So you've got a strip. Um, it can be between a half and a quarter and a half inch or even three quarters of an inch. It's just a scrap strip, but it just needs to correspond with your pattern paper. I'm actually using that side of my paper. Now, if you've got six by six paper, what I normally do is I would get my six by six paper, I'd trim my half inch piece off the bottom. So this one is, yeah, five and a half. No, I haven't cut that one right. So it should be two inches wide by five and a half inches. Okay, so 
So I'm gonna, so normally when I cut my pattern paper, my six by six, I'll cut it down so it's five and a half. So I've got my strip already, and then I'll cut it into two inch strips. So you can get three cards out of your six by six paper, okay? Let me use that one on here. All right. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're just doing our mystery stamping. So we're going through clue number one, which is gathering our supplies. So if you're stamping along at home, what we'll do is we'll, um, I'll show a clue, and then after each clue, you'll get some time to stamp. Hi, Laura, thanks for watching. Okay, so, the last one of our supplies that we need for this morning is either some twine or some trim or some ribbon. I recommend if you're using ribbon, use a thin, thinner sort of ribbon. Don't try and use a wide one. It's not going to give you the same effect. Okay? So, well, that's our clue number one. Has everybody... Um, gathered your supplies if you have just write in the comments done one so each time you have a clue and you're finished with the, that part of the clue just type done and one uh, the number clue number okay I haven't even had my coffee yet this morning it's been a bit of a hectic morning but Steve has made me one all right so I'm not stamping along with you as such today. Well, I am, but not on cam, not necessarily on camera. But I will show you um, how to do a couple of the sticking points. All right, we're right. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to use you as my guide, Glenda. So let's get started. We're going to start on clue number two. And clue number two is time for stamping. So you're going to take your white piece and you are going to stamp on it um, with a sentiment. Now, it doesn't matter, this mystery stamping, so it really doesn't matter which way. <laughs> no pressure, Glenda. I'll be doing it at home too, so um you don't necessarily have to worry about it being pressurized because um i just want you to have fun now you're stamping in a your ink color will coordinate with your cardstock in some way I can't even eat this morning. That's dreadful. It's funny when you have one of those days and nothing's quite going according to plan. Maybe because it's Saturday. So, and this is a card that you can make. Um, I use it for batch stamping or bulk stamping. And you can make a lot of them really quickly. So if you have got people that you have to send, it's going to sound awful, people that you have to send handmade Christmas cards to, but you don't necessarily want to send them something that's taken um, lots and lots of time to do, um, this is a great card for that because it um, just makes it easy to stamp a lot quickly and it still looks really pretty or impressive, but it's not, it, I swear it takes you probably less than 15 minutes to make it. All right, so 
Just keep that in mind. It's not meant to be difficult. Of course, you can decide to step it up and do all sorts of things with it once you've got your foundation pieces cut and Okay, so I've stamped my sentiment. And how are we going, Glenda? Are we on the same space? So remember when you're just stamping along at home, type the clue number, clue and done. So in this case, two and done. So I've got my sentiment all stamped. Okay, so now, if you haven't done this already, you're just going to layer that on. And I layered it flat, I didn't layer it flat. So we're up to clue number three. And clue number three is an optional thing, and this is one of the things that I will show you. One of the few things I will show you during this stamp along because remember there are no mistakes in crafting and this is just supposed to be a bit of fun so I've layered my my cardstock piece where does it go this one here this will go on the front we're only, we've just laid so we've all we've done is we've stamped it and then we've layered it on our it won't be on the inside it'll be for the front of our card okay yeah, I think that answers your question I couldn't read text that time or comment that huh okay so if you're using ribbon what you're going to do and one of the easiest way to is You've layered these two together. You're going to flip it over and you can use either glue dots or tape for this. I'm just using a bit of tear and tape. And I'm putting a bit. Now, there's a couple of ways you can attach the ribbon. So you can attach the ribbon so it just goes across one corner whatever corner or you can attach it so it goes across opposite corners um, I'm just doing one corner for now so just shoving on a bit of my chair and tape I have to sit down for this I'd have to get Steve to bring me my coffee I left it on the bench Okay, so I've just lifted off the backing of my tear and tape and I am going to, oh and he's such a good man, I didn't actually think that he would hear me, but he's brought my coffee over in my gorgeous cup that my friend Alison gave me, I'll just have a sip and show you. This is a gorgeous cup my friend Alison gave you. I don't want to tip it up too much because it's got shoes. I, I love flamingos and I love shoes. So my friend Alison, who is travelling at the moment, gave me that. So that's my happy morning cup. I have it. use it each morning. Just um, I always feel a bit loved because I know that of my favorite people in the world gave it to me so we've got our tear and tape on the back now you can use glue dots for this i'm using this new um iridescent trim you just wrap it over so i just wrap, wrap it over the front of your card like that really really easy and trim off your excess and if you're doing a having a bow with it this is you can tie your bow here but that's our clue number three so 
not particularly hard. Are we right there, Glenda? If you're using, if you're not using ribbon, just type done, and I'll know. I'm going to tie my little bow using my 10 second bow maker. If you're in the United States and you're watching on this on replay, um, you can get these 10 second bow makers from iteachstamping.com and um, support my one of my dear friends, Meg. Um, I use mine all the time and I'm hoping that I will get back to the US and get some more for my customers because it's such a hassle to get them posted to Australia. So I'm just going to pop my bow on with a, oh these are old glue dots, they're on the other, the old side. Amazing what you find in your craft room. So. Oh, whoops, it's sticking to the back. So just pop it over to one side. I might even. And then we're up to clue number four. All right. Clue number four is, and you've probably already done this, Glenda, is you fold your cardstock in half to make, and you use your bone folder to make a, um, A side or top folding card it doesn't matter which way so make sure you use your bone folder to burnish the edge or make a or rub the edge to make it nice and crisp if um, you like scoring your card score it and then you'll get an even crisper edge all right so clue number four is pretty easy when you've done that just type done now this card works either horizontally or vertically, it doesn't really matter. So just depends on the orientation of your pattern paper. And we're up to number five. Clue number five is just, just going to attach this to the inside. And I said this is a 15 minute card and it really is. The hardest part of making this card Oops, I should be doing this off screen. The hardest part of making this card is actually choosing your pattern paper and choosing your sentiment. Right. I have a whole pile of them to make that I've cut, but I'm trying to get the right sentiment um, to use for each one. And because I know that I need to make a whole bunch of Christmas cards and yeah so when you're attaching your white on the inside I and this is up to you completely I like to have it the same distance from each edge but some people put it flush against the spine of their cut fold of their card and that's okay all right so when we've done that we'll move on to clue number six and make sure when you attach it you don't attach it to the wrong side of the base or the, like it's to the right hand side or below your um, fold and I know that that seems pretty straightforward but it's not always obvious to people. Clue number six. So this is where you need your other piece of um, white cardstock, large piece of white cardstock and your piece of two inch pattern paper, two inch wide pattern paper. Okay and you, all you're going to do and I will show you this bit is you're going to make it flush against the edge. Now you can choose the left edge, you can choose the right edge, it doesn't matter. So just make it flush against the edge of your white cardstock. If there is any 
overlap like even though I've measured and I measure everything twice before I cut um, <coughs> excuse me I um, sometimes don't necessarily um, sit um, cut it straight or there's a very slight variation in cutting so if it's not completely perfect and not, well nothing's ever perfect but completely lined up you um, are just going to trim turn it over and trim off any excess so What's the weather like up there, Glenda? I'm heading up your way. Well, not quite your way. I'm heading up to um, Burnett Heads. Burnett Heads? No, Burham Heads. My brother's at Burnett Heads. So not too far from you. So, um, next week. Um, it should be nice. I'm looking forward to seeing my parents. I haven't seen them for a little while. My house sitter's sorted, and um, Delphi's excited that she's coming. And um, it's overcast but warm. Yeah, Mum said it was because Burham Heads is a bit lower south than you. Mum said it was really windy and cold yesterday, but they're on the river, so that and they're, as I said, a little bit south. So, yeah. Um, so if you've done this one here, you just turn it over um, and trim off any excess that, that might be there. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. You're in central Queensland, so you're a bit further north. Yeah. Yeah. So there, I think mum's midway between us. So she, yeah, she's in more towards Bundaberg. Yeah. So we're not getting any further north, unfortunately. Not this trip. Okay. So we're done clue number six. <coughs> Let's turn it over and go on to clue number seven. I'm assuming you've done that since you've had an opportunity to answer me. Now, if you don't have, uh, you've got this, your half inch strip. Now you can, it says to, at, to attach it to the top edge or to the edge of your two inch pattern paper. So basically you're going to center it down the, the page. It doesn't matter if it's that way or that way. It really doesn't matter. Okay. This is such a good foundation card. If you don't have, like if your reverse side of your pattern paper isn't quite right, <coughs> bless you Steve, use a piece of scrap or use a piece of ribbon. There's nothing, nothing in the rules that say that you have to um, use the other, or use some paper from another pack which I think I'm going to grab some paper and do that one. going with that one Glenda are you done you done that one too so I've just used a, a different piece of pattern paper that's going to bring out the um, 
So this is a great way to use up scraps, scraps of cardstock, scraps of pattern paper. Because we always have, well I don't know about you, but I always have, because I cut my cards down a little bit to make it easier to work in inches, I always have a little bit of paper left. And you want to make sure that that is straight, however you decide, whatever you decide to use. I had planned to have about 15 of these made this morning, but I lost a stamp and because it was stuck to the back of my guillotine. All right, so we're on to clue number seven. Right. It's such a beautiful day here. It's like, um, we've just got our t-shirts and light pants on and it's, the sky is nice and blue. Well, it is out the window. I guess if I looked at the other side of the house, it might not be. Whoops, what we forgot to do was that one. We forgot to add it on, I'm missing a step. So we're going to add this on, t this layer onto our base card. Okay, that's a bit tricky. I have to go and amend that and amend my instructions. So if you've trimmed, oh, it's hard to get good help these days, isn't it? Have I commend all my instructions? Yeah. So this is a nice um I said it's an easy card. So if I was doing making a whole batch of these, I would do I could stamp all my sentiments first, then I would stamp and I would layer all those sentiment layers. Now, what I didn't say before about that is you can change the size of your sentiment layers. So we've stuck that onto our base card. So we're looking, it's starting to look like it should. Okay. Now, you're going to add your sentiment layers and this is where People go, oh, tell me which way you're going to. Or you want me to do it. I don't know which way your pattern paper design is running, so I can't tell you. So, you, but you could put it on your card that way. You can put it on your card that way. It depends on your sentiment. I don't know what you've chosen. So, um... This bit's a little bit of fun. So, and this bit's where, when you're making a batch of them, you can make everyone different. So I attach it with dimensionals or foam adhesive, just to give it a little bit of a, a raised up look. So when you've attached it, say done, clue number eight. And then you'll have one more step and you'll get be completely finished. Okay. So now, can you guess what step number nine is, Glenda? Or everybody? I think that's the only, the only, only one watching at the moment. Everyone's, I know my friend Kim is on a stamp camp, so she's probably still having breakfast or something like that. Yes, you're right. We're gonna add some bling. So, 
you can um, add it wherever you like. Yeah. Let, and I had Blink Wink of Stella. If you've got some ribbon, another ribbon you want to add underneath your sentiment, you can do that. This is where you get to make it a little bit different. You've always got to have blink, yes. Even if it's just a little bit of a splatter, a wink of Stella, or I'm just gonna have something to make it bright and happy. Now I've got all of my bits, um, my bits cut. Um, for a whole heap of other little cards. And these are all using the Rings of Nature stamps uh, pattern paper that's free with Celebration. So I've got lots of things to cut to finish today. And um, well, I've got a little bag and I've got a whole lot of two inch strips. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining us for Mystery Stamping this morning. We're just on our last clue. Um, but if you want to watch it on replay, please do. It'll be really lovely to have you watching. Our last clue is adding bling to our card. Now, um, yeah, we call, I call this a foundation card or like as a, my friend Meg calls it, her little black dress card because it can open up to a whole heap of possibilities. Now, bling's gone missing. And what's a really good thing is if, if you're doing this as a batch card, you can um, set up your stamparatus. So you're stamping in the same, and you can actually change some of the um, layers. So if you're using die cut layers, oh, you haven't had cataracts. Um, that's not really good. Yeah, it's hard when things don't line up good. I'm not waiting for cataract surgery, so I don't have that excuse, but I don't line things up good either. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Um, my mum would be terrible if I said I don't line things up real good. <laughs> Oh, she'd be horrified. Okay. So. Our clue number 10 is that if you finish with your bling, your mystery is solved. So, as I said, my friend Meg calls this her little black dress sort of a card. Um, I call it a foundation card. And so let's have a look. Is this the best card that I'm ever going to create? No, it's not. But what it is, is a really good foundation on which to start. I've made some others, which I like much, much better. And this is good if, you don't, if you're not sure on how to use the paper. So I've used a paper from... So this is another example, same sort of layer, different paper. I didn't have, uh, because this paper here, um, which is a glimmery, metal-y paper, didn't have a, um, a reverse side. It's only a one-sided paper. I took a strip of it, and I don't know if you can see it. I'm holding it up here to the light. I've embossed a strip of it. So when you touch it, you can actually feel that it's embossed. And so that was that little one. And so, and as I said, you can make three out of a pack. So this one here, 
I um, added some silver foil and added some, my bling to the um, confetti, I guess you'd call it. And I, instead of cutting a, um, cutting the thing to size, I've changed the size and used a die cut. Um, that was a stitched rectangle. Um, that one was from the, that sentiment there is from the, um, oh, and I also added another layer. So if you think that the black one is too plain, this one actually has a foil layer. But don't worry, I didn't use a whole sheet of foil. I cut bits out of the middle, which this piece is a piece of silver foil. And then, if you want to step it up a little bit, and as I said, you don't, you might not have enough of the pattern paper, use some ribbon across it. I changed the size of my sentiment. It's still a rectangle, but it just is cut down. But then I also embossed. Uh, so instead of the the um, pattern paper, I used ribbon, and then I embossed with the um, this really cute embossing folder. It's I don't know what it's called. Um, it's in the annual catalogue, and it's got it's really great snowflakes. So I embossed those snowflakes. And so those snowflakes, they basically told me, oh, well, they're the best places to put my bling. So it's just, so it's the same card. You just change the way the layout. And so you can put this at the top, at the top, in the middle, or turn, flip it round. Or, and I haven't finished this one here, um, I had planned to, um, oh, that's the wrong one. You can p even put your paper up the top. So they're not, so these are really 15 minute cards. Once you've got everything cut, um, it doesn't take long. And if you're anything like me, when I get a pack of um, white cardstock, the first thing I do is I cut it into my first layer. So these this layer size. And then when I get a cap, pack of thick white, I cut the half the pack into a card base size and the other half of the pack, um, uh, like a card base horizontal size. And then with my thick, the rest of my thick, I will cut it um, so it's a, what they call it a, a top folding card so it's long ways so that saves me a lot of time and, and I do that with the thick white the vanilla and also with half a pack of all of the colors and I only do half a pack of all the colors because I then with the colors I will cut them um, half of that, uh, a quarter of the pack, I will cut to a card base, um, a card front size, like card front layer size, which is quarter of an inch smaller than what my card base will be. And so that way, you're not, when you want to make a card, it's all ready. So that's my little Saturday tip. And I'm sorry I was late this morning, and I hope that you um, post a photo in the in the comments of um, what your card looks like. And I um, also wanted to tell you with this one, what you could do is if you have a like a flourish, you can add some die cut flourishes underneath. You can also add some, like a flourished, a heat embossed flourish. So you can really step it up if you want to, or you can just make just a really simple plain card like these ones. 
Um, it doesn't take long to um, emboss and you can emboss two sheets at a time. Well, I do, depending on your embossing machine. Mine's a big gold sturdy big shot machine which I use just for embossing. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few ways that you can step that up. So, and yeah, adjust. If you want to be more frugal, adjust the size of your sentiment. But whatever you, your coloured cardstock layer is, it needs to be a, around a quarter of an inch bigger than your um, white layer. And so I will finish the rest of my cards today and I will post them um, in the comments and also um, elsewhere uh, on our Facebook group and on our Facebook page so you can see just a few um, cards. And I really hope that you like it and that it inspires you to make some um, quick Christmas cards. And it's like if you've got really nice paper. Oh, hi, Kylie. Lovely to see you. Oh, I didn't know that you were watching. That's so nice. Um, and as I said, you get three cards out of a six by six piece of paper. So you get four times that many out of a 12 by 12. So... Um, so it's good for paper that you don't really like. So if you, say so for example, you didn't like this paper and you didn't like the other side, you can stamp over it. You've been here a while. I didn't see you join. I'm so sorry, Kylie. Did you stamp along? Oh. Yes. Anyway, so this is it for this morning. Yeah, if you um, if you didn't like this paper, you could stamp on it, or you could splatter it with ink, or you could do something. You could even even um, send it through your embossing folder. So if you had like a a pine, there's a, a narrow embossing folder that goes with this one that's got pine leaves on it. You could send it through and then ink it. Um, so. You can think of possibilities of how to use that paper that you don't like. Like, I like the other side, so that's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to use that. But just um, play around and find, if you find a sheet you really, really don't like, this is a great way to use up lots of them. Get it out of your stash, and then you can buy paper that you do like. Okay. Um, oh, well, Kylie, make sure if you stamped along that you post a, when the video ends, you post a photo in the comments because I want to see what you made. Okay. All right. Well, everyone, you have a happy Saturday and I hope that you um, enjoy this card and that um, it becomes one of your little black dress cards. Um, Oh, I did forget to say, you can even change the shape of your sentiment. So you could do circles or you could do um, ovals or octagons or whatever. So if you die cut a whole heap of pieces, use those. So it's a great way to use up your scraps. All right. Until next time, happy creating. Bye for now.